All right, so I've gotten to the top of the climb here and now it's time to transition. So first thing I'm gonna do is batten down the hatches. Created a bunch of heat on the way up. I wanna try and trap that if I can. I'm gonna close all my vents. Next thing I'm gonna do is get out my warm jacket for the down and most likely change my eyewear. So now I've trapped that heat. I have my clothing on for the down. I'm gonna switch my boots first. Kind of work my way down here. We'll go boots, bindings, then skins. It's locked there in ski mode. Get my power strap nice and tight. That's critical. Put my toes down. Pull my skins. Those will go in my pack. So I usually go downhill ski first. And then the uphill ski, I can cross and rip. It looks hard, but it's actually super easy once you do it a few times. And on storm days like this, oftentimes I take my break at the bottom for food and water because that's where it's gonna be warmer, more pleasant. Depending on your group and your goals for the day, when you get to the top, you might want to spend some time and enjoy the views, hang out, recuperate, so you can actually enjoy the down. So if that's the case, I'm probably going to come completely out of my skis. I need to be really careful here if it's an exposed spot, I don't want to lose these. So a nice thing is I have skins on them right now, they're not going to slide away. But if it's really exposed, I might just stab these in so they don't get away from me. So the one downside of coming out of my skis at the top of the run is the holes on my boots are gonna fill with snow and I need to make sure that I clean those out before the descent. If I'm worried about snow being in those holes in my boots before I lock my heel in, I'm actually going to lock my toe and I'm gonna move my ski back and forth and those pins actually have a little bit of a serrated edge on there. They'll actually clean out those holes for you. So do this, you know, a dozen times or so, and they should be nice and clean. So the other thing that can happen when we step out of the bindings is snow can pack in underneath these springs, and that can stop the jaws from fully engaging on your boot. So before I step in, I'm gonna clean this out of here by just opening and closing this until all the snow falls out. And so I do this with the ski vertical. So as it loosens up, it'll just fall right out the bottom. So it is a lot easier, a lot less athletic to take these skis off and just pull the skins. So sometimes I'll do that instead. So when we fold these, we want to try and get this tab just a little bit higher. So that'll make it easier to pull without ripping the tab off. And then I'm just trying to get as much of the glue covered so we don't pick up any contaminants. <clears throat> and if it's a really cold day or my it's been a long day and my glue is maybe starting to fail, I might stick these in my jacket to keep them warm. That might help them stick a little better. But if I have good glue, I'll just toss them in my pack. And now when I'm stepping in, uh, especially if I have a, a ski without a break like this one, I have to be really careful that I don't lose it down the hill. If this binding did have a break before I peeled the skins, I'd wanna make sure I engage that break because if I drop it, I don't wanna lose it. When the skin's on, I'm much less likely to lose that. So a lot of times I'll stab my tail in, that'll keep it from getting away from me. And you can see I actually, this ski, I still have a little bit of snow in there. So I'm gonna pick this up and clean that out. I wanna make sure that I don't stick something in here to clean out that snow, because the more that gets scratched, the more snow that place is gonna pick up. A lot of the bindings these days and boots these days have some sort of stop that helps you find where those holes are. So I can usually just swing forward until it hits those stops and step in. Another technique I can use 
is just to try and catch one of the holes and roll into it. So we just got down to the bottom of the run and now we're transitioning to another climb. So I'm gonna ditch my pack and get my skins out. And usually, especially if it's deep or if I'm on a glacier, I'm gonna do this one ski at a time. So make it so I'm less likely to lose it if we're not at the absolute bottom of the valley. And if we're on a glacier, it still gives me that nice flotation that helps me avoid falling into a crevasse. I wanna make sure that my base is clean, my glue is clean. If I open this up and I have ice on my glue, before I put it on the ski, I'm gonna wanna clean that ice off. And one of the easiest ways to clean off ice on glue is to scrape that skin on your edge. Kinda of using my knee to hold the ski in place, and I'm just moving it back and forth. Perfect scraper to clean that off. Once I have that clean and the base is free of snow, I can put this on here. Trying to be careful to keep that skin out of the snow. Try and keep that glue as dry as possible. I'm being pretty precise with where this skin goes, making sure it's in the middle of the ski, not too much base showing on either side. And now I'm just making sure I get a good stick. And same deal as before, I need to make sure that this is clean. Get all that snow out of there. Now in walk mode, ready for the up. And I just move on to the next ski and same thing. And then I'll probably end up ditching my hat on the climb. So the other reason you wanna be a fishnet that transitions is it just gives you more time to take care of yourself, enjoy the day. You don't wanna be wasting all your time at these transitions.